Okay, into the conservatory. So before we start, tell me a little bit about who you are, what you do here, and what we're about to see. Absolutely. So I'm Jessica Bonilla. I'm the Director of Horticulture here at Hillwood Estate Museum and Gardens. And we're the former residents of Marjorie Merriweather Post. And she was an amazing businesswoman, collector, philanthropist, and she was a lover of orchids. So we're going to go through and uh, see our orchid collection today and, and talk a little bit more about orchids. So the greenhouses themselves, there originally was one house, mm -hmm. and then when she moved in in 1955 and bought the property, she added four more houses. <laughs> As one does, because you know your greenhouse is never big enough. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. <laughs> And then she went through and as she was growing her collection, she also hired a uh, orchid curator to take uh, care of them. Okay. So she ended up with a collection of uh, about 2,000 orchid and tropicals. So. Wow, so and that's species or cultivars or a little bit of both? Or? Uh, lots of cultivars. Yeah. Yeah. I see a little bunch of cattleyas here as well. So. And that was her favorite, okay. for well, sure. Well, these are like so. the corsage, you know? I feel like these are like, they look like corsages, you know? They're, <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yeah, the big flower, you know, big flowers. And here you can see, you know, the typical that they have the three, three petals yep. and three sepals and, you know, this wonderful modified lip. Is this like a permanent collection here or do you kind of move them in and out as they're flowering? No, these are working greenhouses. So what you see, I this see. is okay. on view all, all year time. long. Oh, yes. Wow. So okay, that's a little, it, it, that's very different from like what I see you know, if I go to even the Smithsonian mm -hmm. or whatever, when they have their display, yeah. they're always looking at what's blooming and they kind of put it out. So that's interesting. Yes. Yeah, throughout the year, we'll take orchids from other parts of, yeah. of the houses and make our nice entry Mix display. Yeah. But yes. Let's start walking yeah. through and see. So actually, if yeah. we could start just yeah. right up here, because Absolutely. I want you to smell this. So if you could smell this Vanda. It Ooh, smells that is like, like candy a little bit. Yeah, grape soda. Grape soda. What do you think? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I, it's so funny yes. when you you say it and then you're like, oh yeah, but then it's grape colored. Yeah. And then you think it, you know, it doesn't smell like orange soda. It doesn't smell like root beer. It smells like grape soda. It really does. <laughs> it's it's a really amazing, and it's really a cross of a couple different uh, plants. But yeah. this has, uh, you know, you can see here the um, moats leprechaun cross with the vanda and yeah. it's really just lovely you never know when you cross them yeah. what it's going to smell like i know yeah for sure um so our greenhouses are kind of divided uh into different environments okay so we have uh, like i said four houses dedicated uh to orchids themselves uh so we have a warm houses an intermediate house and then a cool cooler house so okay so then you yep. you, you really can't probably mix and match too much because some of those orchids will do better in a cool house yes. versus a warm house. Kind of the intermediates. Yeah. Um, we don't typically, so in our cooler houses, that we'll see in a minute, are, are cymbidiums, and we typically Got don't it. bring them out too much. Um, but the intermediate and, and uh, warm seasons. I love things even nice. like this because they're not as you know bodacious as some of the other ones. Oh. But the little greenish yellow chartreuse colors with the coloration of the red. I think it's so cute. Oh my gosh, yes. It's a wonderful dendrobium mm -hmm. here. So, And uh, we'll see more of them, but they have really thick stems, mm. and this serves as water storage. Are they deciduous so, at all, or, or no? Um, uh, dendrobiums usually they can be deciduous, semi yeah. evergreen, or evergreen. This is t typically uh, an evergreen. I was going to say so. this is actually quite a, a firm leaf, so they put a lot of energy in this. That they probably wouldn't want yeah. to lose it. It's a yeah, really uh, yeah. Very, they're very interesting. And so. you have a lot of companion plants. I should just kind of point oh, out sure. too, like like the begonias. Uh huh. Yep. And you have some Pot, pop, the, yeah, yeah, pop crotons, yeah, crotons, yeah. Crotons, crotons, kind of yeah, fill the, in the gaps. Sure, polar palms. Yeah. You got it. Yeah, it makes it more interesting. Yeah, too. for sure. And we also love um, the Spanish moss, too, since oh, I we're see, talking I about see, that. I see yeah. that you have it. It's a yeah. it's, it's everywhere. We've had, yeah, we've had a lot of Spanish moss for, for a long time. So. That's great. Yeah, really neat. Now, are a lot of these um, part of the collection have been from the collection since Marjorie was here, or are these new acquisitions? How do you go about that? 
Yes, um, not a whole lot left from her original collection. Okay. Things have been moved around. They went other another place at one point and came mm. back. So it, it has been building over the over the time period. But yeah. yeah, not really original. And we are always adding and fixing. You know, from like '97 to 2000, we did a lo big restoration, mm -hmm. and actually the greenhouses were torn down and rebuilt, oh. but in the same style as yeah. Marjorie Post had. Nice. Um, but a lot of that was for accessibility. There was actually steps in the greenhouse, so like... You're opening yeah, it up to the public now. You have to kind of think about those accessibility Absolutely, yeah. and they did a lot of those changes throughout the whole gardens as well. You Got know, it. We wanted to, yeah, be available to everybody. So. And here's another mm -hmm. Cattleya. Yes. Oh, look at this little bee. Yeah. He's just waiting. <laughs> He's waiting for some sun. Oh, it's a bee fly, actually. <laughs> That's great. He's just waiting. Just going to wait for that sun to come up. That's great. So we would consider uh, this one of our warmer houses. Okay. And then also um, as we go to around that way. Mm -hmm. And then this would be our intermediate house. Okay. So this really houses a lot of our pathiopetalums and uh, phragmopedium slipper orchids. Mm -hmm. And if you're over this way, you know, they're slipper orchids because the lip actually looks like a little slipper. For our slipper orchids, pathiopetalums typically come um, from the eastern uh, hemisphere, Asia, uh, southeast uh, Asia, um, where then the, uh, the phragmopediums. Look at the color Yeah, I that. know. There are some great ones. I mean, it's like this red, red coral color. Yes, and here's another cute one right yeah. here too. They're more from the Western Hemisphere, going Central South America. But they kind of developed a, a, the same type of, I, I guess, like system, like that little pouch down oh, below. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah, absolutely. On this side, also more Western Hemisphere plants. These oncidiums, mm -hmm. and you know, they're the dancing ladies. The dancing ladies. Yes. Orchids, yeah. We turned the mm -hmm. fans off, but if the fans were on, they would be dancing. For they, us. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. The cultivars of uh, the hybrids of the um, brassicas as yeah. well. Gilded urchin halo. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty impressive. And you can see why it gets this spider, spider name. Yeah. yeah, it's the spider orchid. Yep. And then these are, they almost look like they have uh, rolled over petals. Mm -hmm. And this one, this is sherry baby. This is the oncidium sherry mm -hmm. baby. And you can smell that and that's has more like of a chocolatey, yeah, yeah, vanilla little, kind yeah. of scent to it. Very light right now, but I wonder if like throughout the day, yeah, it starts to pick up some of the scent. That's now, true. Wh who's actually pollinating? Who's coming in here and pollinating some of these flowers? Do you ever see, I mean, we just saw a bee fly, but. Yeah, we'll get, yeah, we'll get yeah. some bees in here, but yeah, I mean, because it's closed, we don't get a whole lot. Um, we will okay. get, we'll get some lost butterflies, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> in here, but yeah. <laughs> And then you have some uh, your terrestrial oh. orchids like your Ludicia. Yes, this color. Yeah, love the foliage on this. You know, well, that's one of the things too. Is uh, you know, a lot of people will go for orchids for their for their blooms, but yeah. the terrestrial orchids, you know, even our some of our native terrestrial orchids are really beautiful. So. Yes, yes, and even like as you're talking, I'm sure your your viewers know more about this, but a lot of these that we just saw, the, the Phragmopedium and the Pathiopetalum, they're more terrestrial right, orchids or semi, to, yeah. yes, compared to like the Cattleyas, which are more uh, epiphytic or lithophytic. Now, does mm -hmm. that encourage you to actually then plant them slightly differently or in different kind of planting medium? Or what's your way of 
caretaking, an epiphytic versus like a semi-terrestrial one? Yeah, I tell you with the way we have them right in, in here, mm -hmm. um, we're pretty much using the same medium for okay. them, but we use a very chunky because right. even though they are terrestrial, these are tropical orchids. Mm -hmm. So what the forest floor of a, you know, of a rainforest is different than like what we would do for like a native orchid yeah. here in the clay of Maryland. Exactly. So, uh, so really it's all this kind of chunky, chunky bark mm -hmm. um, with some charcoal um, uh, mixed in. So the water can drain right through. Look yeah. The little fuzz right here. It's like a belly button fuzz, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're wonderful. Yeah, for sure. And here, this is a, a great one too. This is Julius, is the cultivar it on that like one. It looks like a bit of Rothschild's Iana kind of uh, species, but do you know what it's crossed with? Or um, I don't know I for no that idea. one. Yeah. yeah. But it's really amazing, and some of them, this, uh, the petals can be really long. And you know, these this is a fused together sepal here. Huh. Yeah, look at the size, the size of that flower. Yeah, that is incredible. Look at the water sitting in it. Yeah. Too. I think this is where sometimes people get the idea that this could, that it looks a little carnivorous, even though it's not. Yes. And it looks like a, you know, what you would see in an Nepenthes, something of that mm -hmm. nature. Yeah. And the color, of course, too, but it's, but it's not at all. Mm -hmm. You know, a wonderful Vanda in bloom. Phenomenal. And that one is uh, Nopadol Delight. And again, you can see how we grow uh, Vanda's a little different. They're not in, uh, really not in pots at all. Yeah. Um, we just let them have the, the roots so just are you, grow are right you down. Spraying like like hosing them down, or how do you give them like a, at least a little drink? Oh, absolutely. Yep. We'll because this yep. is, does this have mist in this house? Or we no? do. Oh, you do. We okay, have okay, misting okay, in the house as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then here's a vanilla time. orchid, correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not in bloom, but you know, no. <laughs> cl climbing up. And so many people forget that it, vanillas are, are orchids. Yeah, so, it's, yeah. Kind of like, you know, it's, a, a, it's kind of like a climbing orchid, and like people, you know, oftentimes sure. you see the ones in the pots, and you're like, oh, that that makes sense. And then all of a sudden, there's a climber, and you're like, what? <laughs> This is another warm house, actually. Oh, okay. So this has our moth orchid collection, total the um, Phalaenopsis, mm -hmm. and you see lots of different colors and patterns. Um, it's always really exciting. So Andrew Badenbaugh is our actually orchid and tropical specialist, and he put together uh, you know that kind of more uh, Longwood esque yeah. uh, ball at the top. So my goodness, I think like we came at a pretty good time because it's it feels like there's a lot in bloom. It feels like you would have moved a lot of these into here, yeah. but it's yeah. interesting that it's a working production greenhouse and this is all what it is right now. Yeah. Um, and well, uh, March is orchid month for us. Yes. Okay. So we do so a lot of programming. <laughs> um, it is when our, most of our collection is in bloom, but we'll have a lot of blooms really up until the end of May. So yeah. there's quite a bit to see. Phalaenopsis like a little lower light. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely why they're on this side of the bench. But then we have the extra a uh, uh, shade cloth right above your head. Mm -hmm. And then too, we do um, use shade paint on the greenhouses to kind of control uh, how much light is getting in here. Because even a lot of the orchids that like quite a bit of sun really don't, couldn't take this full direct sun. Right, uh, especially uh, south when you facing here. Sun, uh, summertime yes. and then you have like 12 o'clock hour and it's like direct <laughs> <Yeah>. overhead. <laughs> so yeah. there's, yeah, shade paint on the greenhouses most of the time. The colorations are just so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's like splatter paint. And mm -hmm. then this one is so beautiful too. This one is a Brisanthi Mackay, kind of a beautiful, gorgeous coloration of that lilac just kind of fading into cream.
And this one kind of seems out of uh, out of touch with the, the rest of the color, you know? It's like you got, you got a lot of creams and purples and pinks, and then this one is su such a kind of loud fire engine orange. Yeah. This is also a great way. To, it looks like some of these are just kind of displayed, and you have all these aerial roots that are just kind of hanging out. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's really how they like to grow. Um, you know, they can grow uh, often, you know, roots over three feet long. Are you, now, is there any kind of fertilizing regime here at all? Yes, okay, yeah, we how do. How do you do that? Yep. Um, so we have um, a dosatron, mm -hmm. um, which, uh, you know, has a tank at the bottom, and we hook it up to the hose. And, uh, and you can just yeah, spray them. Just spray it on. Oh, yep. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. And leaves and all, it doesn't, have, it doesn't. You know, you could put it on the leaves, you could put it on the roots, and that's, Absolutely. that's good. Okay. Yep, yep. Um, and for, like, disease and in insects, we are really managing uh, the, ground, the greenhouses more organically. Mm -hmm. So we release beneficial insects um, to combat, uh, you know, insect problems. Scales and uh, thrips, or what are some uh, of the biggest issues that you have to deal I with? I would say scale is our biggest problem. Right. Uh, and then mealybug. The brown yeah. scales, I find, are really challenging. When I, when I go to a lot of botanic gardens, it's like one of the ones that they will use a systemic like insecticide mm -hmm. for because there's not a, a lot of integrated pest management that really attacks the hard scale. Yeah. Is that something that you have to find too where you're just like, oh, it's a little bit more challenging? On oh, that it, side. for sure. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, a lot of the scale is challenging in general. So, yeah. uh, so again, we're trying to find, um, you know, the right insects to combat mm -hmm. that, but it is a lot of mechanical taking stuff yeah. off, you know, using um, alcohol as yeah. well and, and taking them off. It's that challenging way, so. in here though, I could see, because everything's uh, rubbing elbows. And uh, yeah. Close quarters. Yes, close quarters, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so this is our coolest house. This is the Cymbidium house. And you can see, yeah, we have quite a few Cymbidiums here along the, yeah, the yeah. right. Yes, yes, yeah, some Dendrobiums also. It's kind of like a raw meat color, you know? often are you bringing something new in? Is it is it something, I know you're not specifically the orchid curator, no. but like, is there, um, you know, is there like a thing where it's like, I really have to have that one or you want to display it? Or is it more just about kind of keeping the vibe of what like Marjorie had set out to have here? So it's certainly about keeping the vibe. And actually um, upon her passing, they did do an inventory mm -hmm. of what she had, but it wasn't, it was a little less specific than we would have liked. Yeah. But we do try to keep, you know, very similar uh, to what she had in terms, like I said, of genera. Because it's really uh, yeah. also preserving her legacy as well. Yeah. And if, if it was something that she liked the cymbidiums and she liked the cattleyas, then to like really lean into that as well. For sure. And then we have different ways too, and I can show you some other examples on the way sure. up, but we like to mount, you can see some mounted oh, yeah. orchids. Like on a root or something. Yeah, yeah. some driftwood that yeah. was bound, but we have some just on, on bark. So it's, um, it's really amazing because, you know, they really evolved to uh, be up in the trees and they anchor themselves in with their roots. So yeah. um, it's really a natural way to... Yeah, to have them do if you, that. If you have a downed tree here or whatever, you could get a little creative and, <laughs> you know, plug your orchid out. <laughs> sure. 
And then this is the, the noble dendrobium here. Just the lovely, I think the, the flowers Yeah, it's are like a bullseye target like right into oh the center. Oh my gosh. In mm -hmm. like a, a, full, a full display, it, it's really impactful. Oh, yeah. And I, I love, I think they, um, the staff was genius about putting it in with the crotons. Yeah. Like the similar color palettes. It's got just like a lot of colors you yeah. know, coming out. Well, this is great. Yeah. I mean, thank you so, so much sure. for yeah. sharing like this. And, and also mm -hmm. just a piece of like Marjorie as well, because for people who didn't know her, you know, it's always nice to see a collection, even though it might not be her original collection, you're kind of leaning into like maybe what she would have had here. Oh, absolutely. She is... Uh, I mean, she's the driving force of what we do. We yeah. would, we want her to be proud of what we do. Yes, we want her to recognize <laughs> what we're doing. I'm so. sure she. I'm yeah. sure she does. I'm sure she's in the clouds right now, saying, "Oh my God, this is like phenomenal." Well, thank you so much. This is oh, lovely, and I'm lo really looking forward to actually exploring the the Japanese garden as well. Fantastic. I hope you enjoyed that film here on Plant One on Me, and if you haven't yet. Be sure to subscribe here to help us grow the channel and get notified when new videos release. As you heard in the last part of the film, we take a stroll through the Japanese style garden at Hillwood Estate on our sister channel over at Flock Finger Lakes. So be sure to check that out too if that interests you. Thanks so much and we'll see you in the next video.